Hello everyone, here we have a Magic Chef stainless steel microwave, 1100 watts, that will not heat up. Turntable still works, the made the Tron cooling fan still runs, everything works, it just will not get hot. Almost without warning, it just died. So I'm going to take it off, take it apart, and see if it's worth fixing. Turn it around. Here's the information on it. Pause if you want to read. So I've got a screw there, screw there, and they're uh, tamper resistant torques. I think I have those. So let me go see if I had them or not. Let me get this cover off. Okay, you got the covers off. See, this is the main one of the capacitors. Big boy capacitor right there. Don't touch that unless you discharge it first. It can kill you. This is the heart of the operation here, Magnetron. There's information on it. China. Transformer, that little thing right there on the capacitor, right here. That's the diode. If that took a shit, then the magnetron can't get enough power to run. So you need to measure it for resistance. Set your meter on the lowest resistance setting. Measure it in one res one direction. Then set it on the highest setting. And measure it in the other direction. So, to test the magnetron, you have to pull the leads off of it and measure for resistance on it too. So I need to discharge that capacitor if it hasn't been discharged. It's been unplugged for a couple days, but you know they can. Who knows how long they can store a charge? So, be very, very careful and short it out. That we don't get electrocuted. So let's do that, I guess. Okay, got the meter hooked up to the diode. And nothing. I ain't getting shit. I said put it at the 10,000. And it's at 20k. And I ain't getting a reading. You can put all the way to 200, the lowest setting. <clears throat> Nothing. Dial took a shit. It says put it on the cathode side, which is the side to ground, because it's grounded to the chassis. So, needs a new diode. Now, these alligator, these clips are from my uh, capacitance meter because the Teslas that came with this thing broke and you can't get replacement parts that's why they're cheap so I'm using these for now so it's at the 20k mm, nothing not getting a reading so that black thing there is the diode So, that's our problem. So that needs to be replaced. So that's the capacitor. That's what you don't want to touch. So it needs to be shorted out first and then safely removed. So you can store them. Store electricity for a while, plus some of them might have what's called a bleeder valve or something on them that prevent them from draining their voltage. So these are one of the dangerous appliances you can work on. 
If you don't know what you're doing, do not touch this shit. Here's the fiend. That still runs. Bearings are good. Fuse. A couple other things. Door switch. Several door switches. And that's the control panel. So I gotta see if I can source a uh, resistor for it. Meanwhile, I'll discharge this capacitor. It's not to get electrocuted. So I need to make sure a wiring diagram of which wire goes where. So I know how to connect it up again. Alright, well I haven't discharged the capacitor. It's pretty much safe. I don't have to touch the terminals or anything there. It's pretty much well insulated, so as long as I don't short myself the ground, I don't accidentally touch nothing, I'll be fine. You know, it's common sense when working on these. If you're a millennial and you're eating Tide Pods, I don't suggest you do this while you're high on Tide Pods. But I can remove the thing. I didn't reverse the leads. I said I tried every single resistance setting. Nothing. So I was reading infinity. So, yeah, let me reconnect this lead. See nothing. That's all I get off of it. Nothing. So it took a shit. It's only 20. The good news is it's about 20 bucks. But I don't know how much shipping is. So I'll probably just, I can probably source it off of eBay. And we'll see if it fires up. If it does, this will be a backup. I'll store it out in the shed in the bag until I need it again. One website I tried looking up the model number for this and it gave me all sorts of parts for a refrigerator. Ice maker, condenser. Like, this ain't no fucking refrigerator. Another website said, we can't find anything. Ain't this, ain't that fucking old. But anyway. And the Magnetron's about 80, 90 bucks. So that's the next thing I'll replace if the dial don't work or if the dial takes a shit again. Maybe I'll measure the resistance on this too. See what's going on. Make sure it's okay. So, that'll be it for this video. I'll make an update once the uh, parts come in. Thanks for watching. Alright, quick update. I just went ahead and tested the Magnetron. It passes, so that's good. The way you test these, set your meter to the lowest setting, lowest resistance setting. Put one, put like one lead on one of the terminals. Put the other lead on the other. You should get under one ohm of a reading. I've done it both ways. Tested it, you know, like positive here, negative here, or positive here, negative here. Done it both ways. This one's only got two terminals though. Then the second test, set it to the highest resistance setting. Put one probe on one of the leads. And then you test, take the other load, the other lead, and touch the uh, metal casing of it. You should not get a reading. It should read infinity open, which it does. Now you tested it both ways. Tested like positive on both leads, negative on both leads. Everything tests out. So the magnetron is good. So I'll go ahead and replace that little diode, and we'll see if it comes back to life.